How's it going guys? I just wanted to get on here and go over some hamstring stuff with you today. So one of the things that the hamstrings help with in the body is knee flexion. So they're going to help pull that knee into flexion or pull your lower leg towards the upper leg, right? So that's generally where we feel the hamstrings flex for us. Um, so there's going to be two ways that we can target this portion of the hamstring that we're working. A seated leg curl is going to be the first one. And this is probably going to be a better loadable option because you're going to be able to put more weight in this position. And you're also going to have the weight of your torso over your pelvis to help stabilize. So it's going to give you better hamstring contraction. Um, and then it's going to get you good stimulus through the mid to lengthen position of the hamstring. So this will be good for mechanical damage and building more size or even more overall strength if you wanted to. So then we have the lying leg curl. Um, the lying leg curl machine is going to be working more of that mid to shortened position of the hamstring, still working that knee flexion portion. So on both of these, you're going to feel the calf help you pull the leg up first. Um, we'll kind of discuss in the last slide how much range of motion you can limit to get the calf out of it and just make sure you're getting more hamstring. Uh, the problem with the lying leg curl is the instability at the hips. So when your hamstrings go to pull your legs up, your glutes then become the stabilizers for your pelvis. If you're not paying attention to that, your pelvis, your pelvis will try and rotate. So having make sure you have good bracing and you're not going to be able to be as stable as having actual weight on your pelvis the other way like when we're seated. Um, but, so if you wanted to work both ends of the hamstring in this position of knee flexion, you could use a seated leg curl and lying leg curl as some options. Um, <clears throat> and then we have the GHD or Nordic curl. So part of that movement, right, we're using the hamstrings to pull us into that knee flexion. So the other part of what hamstrings help us do is go into hip extension. So from this position, our hamstrings are going to help pull forward as the glutes finish, right? So with the RDL, that's going to target the hip extension portion of the hamstrings. Also, you can do that with a 45 degree hip extension. So bending over there, right, and keeping the legs straight engine yourself up you can target more of that hamstring or you can go all the way through the glutes so that's the thing with hip extension is you're usually going to have some glute involvement unless you limit range of motion and are really cognizant of where you're trying to work um, and then once again on the GHD this is going to be part of that motion too right driving up the hips forward at the top so, so how to bias the hamstrings limiting range of motion <clears throat> uh, if you want to look in the picture on the right for the seated leg curl, I stop my feet 15 degrees shy of where they would be straight. That's going to allow the hamstring to be the main muscle that's moving my leg. Once we get up into that 15 degree range, the gastroc then starts pulling for me first. So that kind of works the same if we go back to the previous slide. Same thing here. Keeping that small angle at the knees is going to help me bias the hamstring better. <laughs> Um, and then even on the lying one, you would just not open the legs all the way. So limiting range of motion is going to be one way. Overloading a shortened or lengthened position is going to be another way. So if we look here, um, where my legs are positioned and where the weight is here, it is pretty heavy. So this is a pretty good overload for length and position on the hamstring. So that's the nice thing about this machine. Um, <clears throat> so just by using this, I can overload that length and position. And then like if we're looking on the leg curl here, these have band setups. So not only is this one also set up to be more shortened because when we're, you know, this is mid to shorten because at the top it's not quite a straight uh, 180 degree angle where gravity's straight on the force or the force of gravity straight on the weight, sorry. Um, so it's a little bit easier than that, but we could add band tension. So these band pegs would allow us to over overload that shortened position again. Um, <clears throat> another way we can, make things more challenging and get more hamstring activation is eliminating momentum, eliminating momentum or even limiting it. So things with like the GHD, if you're done it properly with a lot of momentum, may not get as much hamstring work as you want. Um, there also, maybe you want to use momentum to, because the hamstrings do need to have that explosive ability for sprinting. Um, so that's another thing you want to keep in mind is, you know, rep wise, you're not going to want to go over 10 usually because you want to keep them to be more of that shortened or that explosive type fast twitch fibers, right? So in sprinting is also going to be important if you can do some form of 
long gate. So sprinting is usually going to be your longest gate where you're really trying to open up and, you know, spread the feet as far as you can and get as travel as much distance as possible and run stride. So that's going to get the hamstrings working along with the rectus femoris on the other side kind of in unison. So that's why sprinting is going to be an important thing. And they don't have to be max effort sprints, but something to get the gait to, um, to that full position. And then tempo and intent. So if you don't have a machine that maybe biases these different positions, you can take, you know, more time in a certain position or you can load more weight so you can only use a certain range of motion that's another way of limiting range of motion to be more effective um, and then intent so the way to make the hamstrings make sure they're explosive is maybe accelerating on the intent on the way up um, but also you want to think about on the way down don't just let the calf take all the weight think about lengthening the hamstring back out right you feel it squeeze up when you curl in think about bringing your calf to your hamstring and then when you release, you're feeling it release nice and slow, right? So it's an active contraction both ways. So that's one way intent can help with as well. Um, so any questions, feel free to shoot me a DM. Uh, if you'd like to apply for coaching, there's a bio or a link in the bio. So feel free to fill one of those out if you'd like to.